Hey dear, welcome back to the world of cross-dressing stories. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Now, let's dive into the story. Ever since I joined the bustling marketing firm downtown, Jacob has been by my side. We clicked instantly. Me, a strategic planner, always trying to see the big picture, and him a creative designer with an eye for the beauty in details. Together, we became an unstoppable duo, known throughout our office for our seamless collaboration and I dare say, our infectious camaraderie. Life at the office was vibrant, fueled by our shared passion for transforming bland concepts into compelling campaigns. But as with all things that shine too brightly, our closeness didn't go unnoticed. Lately, the office gossip started to pick up whispers, whispers that twisted our brotherly bond into something it wasn't. I found myself being nudged and winked at during coffee breaks, with colleagues teasing about my work husband. At first, it seemed harmless, playful even, but the whispers grew louder, turning into rumors that I feared might affect my professional reputation. The real trouble began when these whispers reached beyond the glass walls of our office, winding their way into my family gatherings. Coming from a conservative family, the implications of such rumors were far more severe. During one particularly stifling Sunday dinner, my uncle, after one too many glasses of wine, voiced out loud what others had only whispered. James, it's high time you settled down with a nice girl, don't you think? All this time with Jacob isn't helping rumors. Each murmur and pointed question felt like a brick being laid around me, trapping me in a version of myself I didn't recognize. The weight of my family's expectations and the office gossip began to meld into a singular, heavy cloak of worry I carried around. It was during one of our late-night Project Grind sessions that I confessed to Jacob the toll it was taking on me. As always, Jacob listened, his brow furrowed in concern, his usual playful demeanor replaced by solemnity. He understood the stakes. He always did. The room was thick with tension and unspoken words, hovering like the cloud of steam from our late-night coffee. It was clear something needed to change, but what? How could we clear my name without losing the essence of our friendship? That night, we stayed up late, not just poring over client revisions, but pondering over a life revision. Little did we know that our inspiration would come from an old movie flickering on the break room TV, a story of desperate measures and unexpected transformations. That night, the seeds of a daring, unconventional plan were sown. A plan that would require more from us than any campaign ever had. It was a plan that might just change everything. And it began with an old movie called Tootsie. The constant hum of my family's expectations grew louder each day, becoming almost deafening during family gatherings. At one such gathering, the pressure intensified. My relatives, ever curious and sometimes intrusively so, bombarded me with questions about my personal life. When will we meet your special someone, they prodded, their eyes flickering with a mix of curiosity and concern. It felt as though every eye in the room was trained on me, expecting me to unveil a part of my life I wasn't even sure about. The air was thick with expectation, suffocating me with every passing second. Feeling cornered and increasingly desperate, I shared these frustrations with Jacob later that evening. We sat in my dimly lit living room, a stark contrast to the bright, scrutinizing lights of the family event. Jacob's presence was a calm in the storm of my turmoil. He listened intently, his face a mask of concern as I unraveled. It's like I'm being pushed into a corner, Jacob. If only there was a way to just quiet all this noise. That's when we stumbled upon an old classic, Tootsie, playing on the television. As we watched Dustin Hoffman transform into Dorothy Michaels, a spark ignited between us, an unconventional, perhaps even radical idea. The movie, a tale of desperation and disguise, seemed almost too fitting given our circumstances. The more we watched, the more it felt like a sign, a potential solution to my predicament. Why not? Jacob finally broke the silence, his voice a mix of jest and earnest. What if I, well, became your girlfriend, just to get them off your back? At first, the idea seemed ludicrous, too bold and fraught with potential complications, but desperation breeds daring, and the more we talked, the more feasible it seemed. Could this really work? Could Jacob, with his sharp jawline softened by makeup and his creative genius, help craft a persona convincing enough to believably play my girlfriend? The plan was simple yet audacious. 
Jacob would transform into Jasmine, a temporary character created solely to deflect the rumors and alleviate the pressure from my family. We plotted every detail, from her backstory to her fashion sense, each element carefully chosen to blend seamlessly into my world. This wasn't just about putting on a dress, it was about weaving a believable narrative that could stand up to both casual observers and scrutinizing family members alike. As we planned, our resolve solidified. This was more than a mere act. It was a statement, a testament to the lengths one would go for friendship and peace of mind. That night, as Jacob agreed to step into this role, our friendship deepened, bound by a conspiracy that was as wild as it was heartfelt. We were about to embark on a journey neither of us had anticipated, fueled by the desire to protect and preserve, driven by the necessity of disguise. And so, with a mix of trepidation and excitement, we set the wheels in motion for a transformation that would challenge our identities, our perceptions, and ultimately, our bond. The morning was bright, crisp with the promise of new beginnings as Jacob and I stepped out into the bustling city. Our mission was clear yet fraught with a mix of excitement and uncertainty. The streets teemed with the, the usual cacophony of city life, but to us, it all felt different, charged with the thrill of our secret endeavor. Our first stop was a quaint boutique known for its eclectic mix of clothing. The bell chimed cheerily as we entered, the shopkeeper greeting us with a warm smile that didn't question our unusual quest. We wandered through aisles draped with fabrics of all textures and hues, each piece a potential element of Jacob's new persona. I watched as he tentatively picked up a flowing skirt, his fingers tracing the soft fabric, a silent contemplation in his eyes. How about this one, James? He asked, holding it against himself, a playful smirk dancing on his lips. It was moments like these, filled with lighthearted banter, that eased the underlying tension of our task. We painstakingly selected a wardrobe that balanced style with believability. A floral dress that accentuated the frame we hoped to project, a soft cardigan for a touch of casual elegance, and accessories that added just the right amount of feminine allure. Each item was not just a disguise, but a piece of armor in our upcoming social battle. Next was the makeup store, a realm far from Jacob's usual haunts. The walls were lined with an arsenal of beauty products, each promising transformation and enhancement. A makeup artist with a keen eye and a gentle touch guided Jacob through the basics, foundation to even out the skin tone, eyeliner to define the eyes, and lipstick to add a splash of color. With each stroke of the brush, Jacob's reflection in the mirror shifted, morphing into Jasmine, the character we hoped would be our salvation. Initially, Jacob's hands trembled, unaccustomed to the delicate art of makeup application, but as the session progressed, his confidence grew. There was a moment, a fleeting second, when he caught his new reflection, eyes wide with a mix of astonishment and pride. I, I almost didn't recognize myself, he murmured, his voice a blend of awe and amusement. As the days rolled into nights, our apartment turned into a stage for Jacob's transformation. He practiced walking in heels, each step initially awkward, but gradually gaining grace. He rehearsed Jasmine's backstory, her likes and dislikes, her mannerisms, every detail meticulously crafted and memorized. Watching him, I felt a mix of emotions, pride in his commitment, anxiety about our ruse's success, and a deep abiding gratitude for his friendship. Through this journey, Jacob discovered a new realm of self-expression, one that challenged his perceptions of identity and aesthetics. His initial reluctance gave way to a profound enjoyment, a liberation of sorts that came from stepping so boldly out of his comfort zone. And I, in turn, found joy in his joy, our plan binding us together in ways I had never anticipated. This transformation was not just about altering appearances. It was about trust, friendship, and the lengths we were willing to go to protect each other. As Jacob embraced his role as Jasmine, we both realized that this act, this facade, was a testament to our bond, a bond that was about to face its greatest test yet. The evening of the company event was draped in a nervous anticipation, almost tangible as I helped Jacob, now Jacqueline, with the final touches of her ensemble. The transformation was complete. He was no longer the Jacob everyone at work knew. Instead, Jacqueline stood before me, poised and elegant, her presence radiating a newfound confidence that even I found disarming. As we approached the venue, my heart pounded with a mixture of fear and excitement. 
The dimly lit hall was buzzing with colleagues clad in their finest, laughter and chatter filling the air. We entered, and I felt Jacqueline's hand tighten around mine, a silent plea for reassurance. I squeezed back, offering a supportive smile. This was it, the moment of truth. The effect of Jacqueline's entrance was immediate and profound. Heads turned, eyes widened, and whispers fluttered across the room like leaves in a gentle breeze. Who is she? I heard someone murmur as we passed. The curiosity was palpable, but not a single soul recognized the creative designer who had walked these halls for years. Instead, they saw only the charming and mysterious woman at my side. Jacqueline mingled with grace, her laughter light and engaging, drawing people to her like moths to a flame. I watched from a short distance, my usual anxiety over office gossip replaced by a deep sense of pride. She handled each interaction with such finesse that even I began to forget the man behind the makeup. It was as if Jasmine had always been part of our world. As the evening progressed, the transformation in the office dynamics was unmistakable. Colleagues who had once whispered behind our backs now congratulated me on finding such a wonderful partner. The rumors that once cast shadows over my professional life seemed to dissolve, replaced by admiration and acceptance. Even those who had been skeptics were caught up in the charm and charisma that Jacqueline brought into the room. The news of my intriguing new girlfriend traveled beyond the confines of our office, reaching my family. Their curiosity was piqued, and the incessant questioning about my personal life took on a new, more positive tone. James seems so happy, I overheard my aunt say over the phone one day, her voice laced with relief and a hint of excitement. It was as if Jacqueline had not only transformed the atmosphere at work, but had also begun to mend the fractures within my family life. But amidst the success of our plan, a small, nagging voice in the back of my mind reminded me of the temporary nature of our facade. Each compliment, each smile directed at Jacqueline felt both like a victory and a reminder of the inevitable conclusion that awaited us. Yet, for the moment, I allowed myself to bask in the relief of reprieve, watching as Jacqueline, my best friend in disguise, danced the night away, her laughter a melody that drowned out the remnants of any lingering doubts. As weeks turned into months, the persona of Jacqueline not only persisted but flourished within the confines of our workplace. The once temporary solution to quell rumors had morphed into a routine, almost comfortable reality. However, the ease brought its own set of unforeseen challenges. One afternoon, during a routine office mixer designed to foster team cohesion, I noticed how Mark, a new member from the marketing department, was particularly enamored with Jacqueline. His attention, initially casual, grew more pronounced and personal. He often sought her out, offering compliments that went beyond the professional, lingering by her side during breaks and laughing a bit too heartily at her jokes. Watching this unfold, a complex whirl of emotions began to churn inside me. A mix of protective jealousy and a deep-seated concern over the potential complications his affections might introduce. Jacob, or Jacqueline as he was known, seemed oblivious at first to Mark's intentions, treating all interactions with his usual friendly charisma. But as Mark's advances grew more pointed, I saw a change in Jacob. We discussed it one quiet evening, away from the chaos of our dual lives. It's strange, James, Jacob confessed, his voice tinged with a mix of confusion and revelation. As Jacqueline, I'm free from the usual constraints, free to be someone else. Yet I never anticipated this kind of attention. It's flattering, yet it feels so complicated. This conversation opened a deeper dialogue about identity and acceptance. Jacob shared how embodying Jacqueline allowed him to explore parts of himself he had never acknowledged openly. It's more than just dressing up, he mused. It's about perception, about how the world sees you and how that changes the way you interact with it. His words struck a chord, highlighting the transformative power of stepping into another's shoes, literally and metaphorically. But our constructed reality couldn't last forever. The truth about Jacqueline needed to come out, and ironically, it was during the company's annual gala, a night meant for celebration, that everything unfolded. As the evening reached its peak, with the office abuzz with excitement and camaraderie, the truth slipped out, not through our own reveal, but through an accidental mishap. Jacob tripped, and as he fell, 
the wig he wore slipped slightly, allowing his shorter hair to peek out. The silence that followed was palpable. As whispers began to ripple through the crowd, Jacob and I stood together, the truth bare for all to see. The reactions were mixed. Some of our colleagues laughed, applauding the audacity and creativity of our ruse, while others stepped back, their expressions clouded with feelings of betrayal and confusion. In the heart of that chaotic storm of reactions, Jacob and I found a moment of profound clarity. We faced our colleagues, our friends, and explained our intentions, our reasons. This was never about deceit, I started, my voice steady despite the pounding in my chest. It was about understanding, about challenging norms and perceptions. The aftermath of our confession was a patchwork of emotions and outcomes. While some admired our courage and the lesson in acceptance it inadvertently taught, Others struggled to reconcile the deception with the co-workers they thought they knew. Through it all, Jacob and I learned that authenticity comes in many forms, and sometimes it takes a journey through disguise to truly understand and appreciate one's identity and the identities of those around us. In the aftermath of our unconventional revelation, the office became a crucible for change and reflection. The initial shockwaves of the incident reverberated through every level of our firm, from the water cooler conversations to the closed door meetings of upper management. But as the initial surprise ebbed, a transformative dialogue began to take shape. The days following were filled with an array of meetings and discussions, focusing on the themes of stereotypes and gender roles that our ruse had unintentionally highlighted. These conversations weren't easy. There were moments of discomfort, of defensive reactions, but also of profound insight and vulnerability. It became evident that what started as a means to an end had sparked a necessary conversation on acceptance and the spectrum of identities. Simultaneously, news of the incident reached my family. Surprisingly, the fallout was less severe than I anticipated. The initial bewilderment soon gave way to introspection. My family, prompted by the unexpected circumstances, began to question their own biases and the pressures they had placed on me. This opened up a new level of dialogue between us, one that was overdue. Their journey from confusion to understanding mirrored the broader changes happening at work, painting a picture of growth influenced by our shared experiences. Amidst this, the bond between Jacob and I underwent its own evolution. The strain of maintaining our carade, followed by the public unveiling, tested our friendship in ways neither of us had foreseen. However, these trials only served to deepen our understanding and respect for each other. We had navigated this journey side by side, each step revealing more of our true selves. The experience solidified our friendship, turning it into a robust pillar of mutual support and admiration. Fueled by these personal and communal shifts, our workplace embarked on a new initiative. Sensitivity and inclusivity training was introduced, aiming to foster an environment where diversity was not just accepted, but valued. These sessions, sometimes awkward but always enlightening, helped reshape our corporate culture, encouraging a more empathetic and open-minded approach to personal and professional interactions. As for Jacob, the experience had a profound impact on his personal identity and outlook. Embracing his role in challenging societal norms, he began to explore more actively the fluidity of his own identity. The freedom and self-discovery he experienced as Jacqueline led him to advocate for broader perspectives on gender and identity, both within and outside the workplace. Our story, which began as a desperate attempt to silence gossip, transformed into a journey of self-discovery, advocacy, and change. It concluded not just with the implementation of new workplace policies, but with personal revelations that transcended the initial goals. Jacob and I, along with our colleagues and families, stepped into new beginnings, where the lines of identity were respected as personal, evolving, and beautifully complex.